All right, so as requested, here is a hopefully quick video on how to use this Arbor Press. Sorry for the background noise. We have a lot of stuff going on around my house. Um, but the first thing I do is I will put a magnet underneath the press. I got this magnet at Harbor Freight. It came in a two pack for 99 cents. And the kit that's at my Harbor Freight, the magnets look like this. Again, the magnet, it serves its purpose because it will allow you to hold your tools in place. Okay, so the first tool that I'm going to show is how to cut out using a punch. So this is just a punch device to so that way I can make the holes to set these grommets. These are tiny grommets. I use them on my straps. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my punch over, well, move my plate over to the, uh, the solid area because this is my cutting surface, and I put my punch in place. I'm going to set a piece of chipboard down. This chipboard is um, like cereal box material, and I'm going to put that down. And that extra cutting surface just allows the cutter to go directly through the material and have a cleaner cut. So take my strap. This is just an extra strap I had laying around, and I'm going to cut a hole in that. So the punch is uh, attached to the ram using a magnet and I have my piece of material in place and I'm just going to pull the handle down, the bar, and I'm pushing down and you can hear it go through the material and it's stuck because that's what it does and it cut through uh, the chipboard. I probably didn't need to push it that hard, but I did. Oh well. Um, and there I have a hole. So that's tool number one. The next tool is I'm going to actually set the grommets. Grommets come in two pieces and it's in place. Next, I'm going to take my grommet setter. This is the uh, bottom piece. I'm going to put my, put my grommet through that. And then I'm going to set this in place on my arbor press. And then this is the setter. This is the part you would normally, this is the part you would normally hit with a hammer. I'm going to put that in the magnet and then I'm going to center my kit on the plate underneath this post. It's easier to do when I'm not doing it on camera. And then I'm going to just use the bar and push everything down. And I'm using some strength, but not too much. And the grommet is set. You can see the front there. It's pretty good. I think I could have done a better job. I certainly would do a better job if I were off camera. But you can see that it is in place. And it's not going anywhere. So it's, it, it's, it's stuck. And again, mind you, my grommet was pretty shallow for the thickness of this material, but it did work. Now I'm going to set a rivet. With setting the rivet, the first thing you have to do is you have to make a hole. Um, my press does have a punch that I can attach to here, but I'm not sure exactly where it is. So I'm just going to use my hole puncher and I am going to make a hole. So the hole is in place and I am also going to, so I'm going to place my rivet through there. This rivet might be a little long. We'll sort of see what happens. Um, I think this is a 10 millimeter rivet. I'm not exactly sure how big it is, so we'll see. Um, I have my cam snap dies. These are the rivet dies that I own, and I'm going to put that in the cam snap hole. And then I have the top die. I put a nut at the end of mine because it gives it a greater surface area for the die to attach to the top of, or to the magnet that's attached to the ram. So I just put a, uh, I put a, a nut on there. I bought the nut from the hardware store. And now I'm going to set my rivet. I put my rivet in the bottom 
you know, sort of set it in place and then bring my ram down on top of it, making sure everything matches up. And then I'm going to press it in place. I think it just bent because I think it was too long, but we'll see. Yeah, it bent. So that's okay because I'm going to show how we're going to take this out here in a second as well, but I'm going to go get another rivet, a shorter one. So the shorter rivet is in place and I'm going to set it on the device and pull the ram down, making sure everything is lined up again. And press. And now the rivet is set. It's not smashed in any way and it is on there straight. So that rivet is set and it's perfect. Another popular item to purchase on Amazon is these hole punch kits. They come in a whole series of, uh, you know, all different kinds of varieties. Um, I generally will use the oval shape one mostly because we use them for the buckles, but I'll just pull out a random piece. This is just a rectangle cutter, nothing particular about it. But if I had to try to, the normal way to use this would be to set it over the fabric and then hit this with a hammer. You'd have to hit this um, on the arbor press. All I do is I set my piece of chipboard down. I set my uh, cutter on, you know, on the magnet and then I'm going to set my fabric down in place, just eyeballing it, you know, estimating where I want it to go. Again, it, if I were doing this for an actual product, I would have everything tested for fit. But now I'm going to set this in place. And bring the cutter down. And I don't know if you heard it, but I heard it. And it gave me a clean cut all the way through. And you can see on the chipboard where it made an indentation, but it didn't cut all the way through. I didn't push as hard this time. So that's how you make holes using these pieces that you get in the Amazon kits. device to show is these cutter pieces. These cutters are um, like this one's a half, a half circle and this is sort of a rounded edge and this is how we finish the strap ends of a bag and I'm going to show you how we can use it in this. So we put the cutter in place, we bring the ram up. The ram is up at its highest point and there is room underneath here like it can fit almost my full finger underneath there. What I'm going to do is I am going to paste my piece of chipboard underneath and then I'm going to set my strap end in place. Strap end, put it in place, and then take my handle and pull my handle. and it's clean cut. So it cut through the chipboard and it cut through the fabric. It and same concept. These might be sharper than these, maybe, I don't know. We'll see, but this worked really well. And you can see it cut cleanly. Okay, so the last device I'm gonna show is how to remove a rivet on a bad rivet that came through. Um, so this one is bad because you watched me install it when in crooked, I can feel it's crooked. So what I'm gonna do is I have the rivet removal tool this is the rivet removal tool that I got from Clumhouse, um, Clumhouse something or other, 
uh, KLUM, and it's their rivet removal device. I'm going to take the plate off. I'm going to put my, I'm going to figure out which, which hole fits my device per Clumhouse instructions. And it's my second one that's going to fit this rivet. And I put, I take the magnet off. And the reason why I take the magnet off is because this uh, um, punch is too long for my, the, the ram with that magnet there. But that's okay, because I can still hold it in place. So holding everything in place, just like you'd have to do if you had a hammer, I'm going to center that over my rivet, and I have it underneath the ram. I can feel it there, and then I'm going to drop the ram on it. And it's sort of in place, it's finding its way in the hole. And the rivet was removed. Here's piece one, here's piece two of the rivet. There's another part that popped through at the bottom in the hole. And now I have no rivet there and I can place another one. Okay, so there you have it. That's how, um, with the tools I have available, how I would use this press. I've watched videos on YouTube where people are tooling leather with their rivet press. I've watched people who have bought embossers for their logos. They wet the leather, they put their logo down with their embosser and then use the ram to press it in place. I've seen people make clickers, leather clickers, and make plates and do all sorts of things with this Arbor Press. I don't have any of those devices here uh, available, but this is what I have at this time. And so, so uh, thanks again. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. I am happy to help. Again, it's Barbara Craig and uh, at Recent Relics Designs.